second only to Alaska in size. Texas is the second largest land holding state in the United States. But public land and Texas are two words that very rarely show up in the same sentence. Today, we're going to explore some of the best public hunting, fishing, and off-roading in the state. Starting in Del Rio, Texas, we're going to prepare for this trip, continue down the Rio Grande into Black Gat Wildlife Refuge, camping out and exploring some of the most desolate land in the United States. I didn't know how to keep food cold in the van. I really wanted to get a refrigerator so I didn't have to mess with ice, but I broke down and bought a 45 quart Yeti. Just got told to go into a very desolate part of the United States with no stores or cell phone service for six days. So I've got groceries here and ice in this Yeti so far lasted two days. What I just threw out was what was left. I bought 11 pounds of dry ice. It was $1.44 a pound. I'm gonna situate it in the cooler and we're gonna see how long it lasts on this trip down to Big Bend, near Big Bend National Park. Oh, this is gonna be kind of exciting. It's gonna be a beautiful trip too, so if you're into desert landscapes and animals and plants, then you know, hang around, because that's what living in a van and using a cooler to keep your groceries in is all about. Know what I mean, my friends? Woohoo! So I gotta say thank you to my employer. The whole purpose of this trip is to do some aerial filming of the Rio Grande. Basically sunrise and sunset are when I fly the drone. And then in between, we're traveling and doing whatever we need to do. Which is when a lot of this vlog was shot. But, some of these aerials, well, I mean, I was there and I still think they're amazing. It's a completely different perspective from standing on the edge of a cliff, getting up and seeing the big picture, what it really looks like from the air, like a bird's eye view. This is Langtree, Texas, and we're about 100 miles east of Big Bend at this point. This was the first stop I had to do for work. I'm working really hard to stay on topic right now. So the cooler's still got ice in. It's been about 18 hours and we caught sunrise on this cliff outside of Langtree, Texas, which is also where I slept in the van last night. It is absolutely beautiful out here. Dude, I'm falling in love with this, this river, the borderlands. I don't know if I so much like the borderlands part as the river, because the borderlands means that a lot that goes on, like mostly American authority, not not even as much uh, as trouble as I see Border Patrol. I met a really cool guy last night though when I was flying the drone, but it was cloudy and uh, I chatted with him for a little bit. And got back on the road. So today we are headed out to Black Gap, which is on the eastern border of Big Bend National Park. You ever been one of those places where you think you could just put a chair in the middle of the road and hang out all day and nobody would really care or bother you? Well, I think this might be one of them. We're about 50 miles south of Marathon. Oh, dude, we made it to the Black Gap Wildlife Management Area. We are west of the Big Bend National Park. And right on the border of Mexico. So they put uh, tracking collars on a bunch of bighorn sheep out here so that they can monitor, well, for one, if they're alive or not, and for two, where they're traveling to. 
Oh my lord. I uh can't open this thing. It's frozen and it's been in the cooler for 36 hours at this point. All right, in here there's wireless internet, a map of the place, and it seriously smells like dead animals. I wonder why. Above all, Black Gap is 103,000 acres of protected land managed by Texas Parks and Wildlife, used for public hunting and the study of wildlife biology down here on the river. The facilities up here are not the reason that we're here and I don't even plan on coming back here for the next five days. So I wanted y'all to check that out and the rest of this is gonna be us out there. Now mean? I should probably quit saying that, huh? disease and too much competition from livestock, desert bighorn sheep had become extirpated in Texas. In the early 1960s, they started reintroducing the species, and these are part of the reintroduction program. Taylor Bailey and I am a graduate student at Sol Ross State University I'm working with the Borderlands Research Institute and I'm out here studying the translocated desert bighorn sheep we have. Um, the sheep we got on film tonight and found were up north of the Black Gap Wildlife Management Area near Dove Mountain and these sheep have been translocated here in hopes to restore the native Texas bighorn um, in larger numbers than what they've previously been. According to literature, around the 1960s from disease from sheep and goat farming, livestock in the region brought in a lot of disease and kind of plagued them. And there was also uh, not very much predator control going on at the time. And sheep just really struggled to keep up the numbers and eventually became extinct from the regions throughout Texas. And our hopes here is to bring their numbers up to a healthy population uh, where they can now occur throughout historic ranges of the Trans-Pecos. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. mental debate last night of whether to get up, go hike with Taylor, 
and find the dead sheep that he's looking for to retrieve the radio collar and biological information to know whether they're getting sick or they're just dying from predators or natural causes. And then I woke up this morning and it almost seemed clear as day. We gotta go see sunrise. Mountains? All right. There is no cell service out here, but there's Wi-Fi at the bunkhouse. And I have a GPS app on my phone that I downloaded when I got lost hiking and never used. And last night I actually downloaded the map of this place. And I want to say the GPS on an iPhone works incredibly well when you don't have service, as long as you're not depending on the map to upload from an internet connection. And it's still like six miles of crazy rocky roads down to the Rio Grande. And that's where we're headed right now. So basically this is a big van and I got a lot of junk inside of it. So I drive kind of slow. It took about three and a half hours to go 14 miles through these mountains on the rocky from San Angelo that were staying in fish camp one there were about 20 of them friends and family and they had caught a 40 pound catfish out of the river just down there where we were hanging out today running trot lines and then they had stringers full of other catfish they've been collecting all weekend but that 40 pounder was a trophy man I don't even think I've ever seen a fish that big it was a first Well, it's about seven o'clock, sun is coming up. And the way the light strikes these canyons in the morning is pretty incredible. You just got shadows on the inside and then the light starts coming through. There's these little millipedes all over the place. To have been storming last night when we went to sleep, the skies got all washed out and it is a beautiful clear morning today. We are switching locations now from fish camp one and two, 14 miles back to the main road, through headquarters, and then 18 mi more miles on these crazy rocky desert roads. Peregrine falcon. I think it's called Peregrine. Had these orange wingtips, and he was flying along. And he dropped down to catch something, and then perched up on a log. And I went to get a different camera, and he's gone. I don't know exactly what this means, but it's the International Boundary and Water Commission. And then on one side it says Mexico. So we're 
I don't know, probably at least a mile as a bird flies from the Rio Grande. The International Boundary and Water Commission is actually in charge of the land along the river. It's international, so it's not part of the United States or Mexico. It's kind of like the UN, and their goal is to best manage the land. Okay, so this is back at headquarters, and in order to come out here, you have to get a public use permit. For Texas residents, it's about $48 a year, and then you register and go to your campsite. We got 18 more miles to drive. I guess at some point people lived out here. This was a privately owned ranch until the 50s when Black Gap acquired it, and it's grown since then. This was a seriously long drive. I had uh, probably nine hours on the road to get there, like given I'm screwing around a lot. Those are guzzlers. So the roof collects water, it pours into a tank, and then wildlife can drink out of it. It's a second water source to the river being out here. And the puddles from all the rain that had been happening. Look at that porch. Could you imagine staying there? This is fish camp one and two where we started this morning. Then we drove up to headquarters, around and up here, down. This is fish camp five and six and we need to keep going up here. got a little bit concerned so I wanted to get out and check it where this is kind of soft soil and we still have I don't know probably six or seven miles along the Rio Grande to get up to where we need to be but the river runs east to west in one little section and I'm hoping that sunrise and sunset will line up with the river and get that beautiful reflection and a fireball behind it. Just one of those epic moments when you think, wow, how was this created? And how lucky am I to be able to see it? I don't even really know what to say. This country is just beautiful. I just want to let the video speak for itself. But I will say, it's getting hot. It's like, it's probably 100 degrees right now. Oh man, I'm just blown away. And these little cumulus clouds floating over these crazy chimney top like mountains. And the roads, not too bad either. I've gone about 30 miles so far, and there's only been three really sketchy spots. And only one did I have to drive like a bat out of hell to get out of, and that was this morning, going up a hill, because there was a bunch of loose dirt under the tire and it didn't want to grip. So I just hit it hard, flew up the top of it. Yeah. Wow. I just had a serious awe moment coming around the corner, seeing the green valley with the river going through it, a big chimney top mountain behind it, and then all of it's encased in these desert rocks and mountain cliffs. Wow. Fordson Tractor. You ever seen wheels made out of steel? Well, now you have. Holy shnikes! We made it! Fish Camp 24. And this is not really an epic ending, so we gotta get down to the river. It's almost 
almost hard to believe that that much land, 100,000 acres, is a state park that's open to the public. All you got to do is get a, a permit to come out here. And it has been a long drive. It is time to get in the river. Oh, dude. All I need is a tube. Can I have an inner tube, please? Just as it started getting dark, I'm uploading footage in the back of the van like I always do. I look out the window, and there's a little orange dot on the hill. And I'm thinking, is that just a reflection in the window, or is that somebody's campfire? So I get the big lens out and zoom in on it because it's the only, I don't have binoculars. And it's a fire, it's a wildfire that was started by the lightning storm behind us. I want to use common sense and say, oh, fire doesn't burn down, I'll just keep an eye on it. But I'm going to keep an eye on it tonight because I, uh, I really don't want to burn up and it's definitely spreading at this point. And it is on the leeward side of the mountain, so the side of the mountain where the wind is blocked. So it's not getting any wind at this point. but. All of those coals can topple down and then the wind hits it and it'll be a shit storm. I can promise you that. I don't have cell phone service either so I can't even tell anybody. It's not super important, I mean it's part of nature, but... Well, I guess that's it. Lightning. Lightning and rain on both nights that we stay in the desert. And now fire. My boss said, oh, it never rains out there. Well, I got news for you. It don't rain. It storms when it comes down. And this is the Rio Grande after a storm. The water is so muddy right now that I can literally hear it sloshing. It's thick, like a slurpee, like a mud slurpee instead of really clean water running through it. Isn't this river crazy? I would have never come out here on my own. I mean, it's a hundred thousand acres of public land, but it's dry, hot desert. It's the Rio Grande. It's a little bit scary to us non-locals just because of all the horror stories I've heard about the border. My spunk and vigor is like kind of worn out. The desert heat, the thunderstorms just sucked it out. Dude, I'm ready to get back to civilization. This is one of those days where you got clear skies and rain. It didn't make any sense. But this is why Texas is famous. Wide open spaces being used. 
capitalism at its finest. Even in the desert, we're raising food. Pumping water out of the ground. Drilling for oil. Putting roads on top of it. So equipment can be transported. And even putting wind turbines up behind the distribution for frac sand. So unfortunately, adventures don't always turn out the way that you want them to, but we were prepared for it, had dry ice in here. This is the seventh day since I packed it. Sixth day. <laughs>